He's not. Let me die. Published in 1974, Carrie has been one of the best-selling books and have been adapted into three movies. Beginning in 1976, a made-for-TV movie in 2002, which served as a backdoor pilot for a Carrie TV series that never happened, as well as another theatrical adaption in 2013. But did you know that there was a 1999 sequel to the 1976 Carrie adaption that picks up where the 1976 adaption left off? Welcome to the first episode of... Movies Discussion with Tracy G, and I am your host, Tracy G. Jackson, and I will be discussing The Rage Carry 2, and for those who follow me on TikTok, you probably see my short video about some facts about The Rage Carry 2 that you didn't know, but I will be discussing the full story about The Rage Carry 24 years after its release. The Rage Carry 2 is considered a requel as well as a Lego sequel, thanks to many reviews discussing the sequel. But due to the fact that the terms requel or Lego sequel didn't exist at the time, Emily Burgo revealed in an interview with Fangoria Magazine, quote, We want everyone to know Carry 2 is a continuation, but at the same time, it's a very different movie. It's not really a remake, and it's not even a sequel. I see it more as the equivalent to how West Side Story relates to Romeo and Juliet. It's the same kind of story, but a very different take on it. Originally in 1996, it started off as a standalone movie called The Curse, and one of the plots that will later be retold in The Rage Carry 2 was partially based off the 1993 Spur Posse scandal, where a group of high school jocks would use the point system to keep track of the girls they had sex with. Stage actress Emily Burgle signed on to the project and production was to begin in 1996. However, for unknown reasons, the project was canceled. Fast forward to February 13, 1998. Screenwriter Raphael Moreau, who was known for being a screenwriter of the 1995 film Hackers, rewritten The Curse as Carrie 2, a sequel to the 1976 Carrie adaption, two months after the script was written. That's when filming and production began on April 25th, 1998 and most parts of North Carolina as well as South Carolina and Robert Mandel, best known for directing School Ties and FX, was attached as director. Most of the cast joining Emily Burgle as well as Amy Irvin reprising her role as Sue Snell consists of Mina Safari as Rachel Lang's best friend Lisa Parker and Eddie K. Thomas as Ernie as well as Jason London, who plays Jesse Ryan, a kind-hearted jock who falls in love with Rachel. Dylan Bruno plays Mark Bean, one of the main antagonists, along with Zachary T. Bryan, who was known for playing Brad Taylor in ABC's Home Improvement, plays Eric Stark. Eli Craig, the son of Sally Field, and currently a director, plays Chuck Parter. Charlotte Ayana plays Tracy Campbell, the ex-girlfriend of Jesse Ryan, as well as secondary antagonist. Rachel Blanchard, plays Monica Jones, a friend of Tracy Campbell and girlfriend of Brad Renters, as well as Deborah Knox, plays Deborah, a friend of both Monica Jones and Tracy Campbell. Deborah is also credited as Party Girl. Two weeks after filming began, Robert Mandel quit as director, supposedly due to creative differences. And shortly after, Kat Shea was called Thursday to take over as director. She arrived in North Carolina the following Monday and filming resumed on Friday, which meant two weeks of footage to be refilmed. Kat Shea later revealed in a 2019 interview regarding the Rage Carry 2 that MGM fired Robert Mandel and she was only brought in to salvage something out of a mess rather than cancel the film entirely. Sissy Spacek, who played Carrie White, was offered a cameo which she turned down. However, she did allow Kat Shea permission to use footage from her scenes in the 1976 Carrie adaption to be used as flashbacks. For the climax scene, which was known as the Black Party, 
held at Mark Bean's mansion, the house was built at an old convention center in Charlotte, North Carolina, which became a shopping mall when production concluded. But as of 2021, the house used for the football game after party massacre is still there in North Carolina, where on screen cinema held a screening of the movie. Production wrapped in July 1998, but there's an ending in the original script that was filmed and later included in the October 1999 DVD release of The Rage Carry 2, which was a snake coming out of Rachel's mouth and choking Jesse. There was also some stuff in the original script of The Rage Carry 2 that you might have or might not have heard of. The character Deborah, who accompanied Rachel Lang on the way to Mark Bean's party, was named Amy and played a larger role where she was mostly seen with Monica and Tracy, as well as sharing a class with Rachel. Before the party, she and Monica invited Rachel to sit with them to watch the football game. Tracy Campbell was described as an icy blonde who wore DK and white glasses. Jesse and Tracy also came just as Rachel was already being humiliated, which Jesse was disgusted by what he saw while Tracy joined in the humiliation. Once the massacre started and after Jesse got a knife embedded in his head, Monica was killed when shards of glass struck her in the face and throat. And soon after, Tracy joined Mark and Eric with guns to kill Rachel, which backfired when Rachel made Tracy's DK and white glasses shatter and stab her in the eyes, as well as Tracy accidentally shooting Eric in the groin area as both Tracy and Eric bled to their deaths. But in the movie, Jesse and Tracy arrived shortly after Rachel's rampage. In the audio commentary, director Kat Shea revealed that during the filming of the climax scene, Rachel Blanchard wore prosthetic eyeglasses for Monica's death scene. But did you know there was one scene that had to be refilmed, which was Eric Stark and his father Lou being interviewed by Sheriff Kelton and District Attorney Deputy Karen. In the original shoot, shortly before Robert Mandel was fired as director, District Attorney Deputy Karen was portrayed by the late actress Teddy Sadal. When Kat Shea took over as director, producers insist that Shea used some of Mandel's footage, but she was adamant that it wouldn't match on top of the studio not wanting to fund a reshoot. So Kat Shea ended up taking over as District Attorney Deputy Karen. Sadal was a friend of Kat Shea who did extensive work on Shea's first film, Strip to Kill. Kat Shea later called Teddy to apologize for personally replacing her. MGM had planned to release The Rage Carry 2 theatrically on October 16, 1998, just in time for the Halloween season when it was originally known as Carry 2, Say You're Sorry, and Carry 2. But due to the fact that most T slasher horror films came out around that same time, it was delayed and released March 12, 1999. The Rage Carry 2 nearly escaped being shelved and locked away in a vault due to the fact that it was released a month before the Columbine High School shooting, which occurred on April 20th, 1999, as confirmed by Metro Goldwyn Mayer, who said that if production was finished any later, it would have been shelved and not released until further notice out of respect of those affected by Columbine. The Rage Carry 2 wasn't exactly a box office hit when it was released, but it later gained a cult following when it was released on VHS as well as special edition DVD on October 12, 1999. The DVD included deleted scenes and alternate ending as well as audio commentary from Kat Shea. On April 14, 2015, Screen Factory released The Rage Carry 2 along with the 2002 Carry Adaption as a double feature Blu-ray in the USA and Canada, which included new audio commentary with Kat Shea as well as leftover special features from the October 12, 1999 DVD release of The Rage Carry 2. As of October 2019, the double feature Blu-ray release of The Rage Carry 2 and the 2002 Carry Adaption went out of print. In March 2019, 88 Films, in partnership with MGM, released The Rage Carry 2 on Blu-ray in the United Kingdom. The 88 Films Blu-ray of The Rage Carry 2 is far different and includes new audio commentary with director Kat Shea and director of photography slash cinematographer Donald M. Morgan. Will The Rage Carry 2 get a separate Blu-ray release in the USA and Canada with new special features and interviews with the cast as well as original footage from Robert Mandel in the future only time will tell. But 24 years after its release, The Rage Carry 2 is praised by critics of the film's deception of toxic masculinity and rape culture, mainly in the wake of the Me Too movement. But The Rage Carry 2 is considered a requel and legacy quote before the words requel and legacy quote was even thought of. Thank you for watching Movie Discussion with Tracy G. I am your host, 
Tracy G. Jackson. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment.